Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today I get to do one of my favorite things. That is share with you some of these kind of smaller indie tools that are out there. And this one is free and recently open sourced, and it is called Spooky Ghost. Now I first heard about this on the Game From Scratch Discord server probably about two weeks back. And by the way, uh, great place to hang out. Go check it out. The Discord link is in the links down below. Uh, but this one, again, is called Spooky Ghost, and it is actually from Nscene. Now this is a, a game engine I covered in the past. We're going to come back and see a little bit about that later. On. But Spooky Ghost uh, was just open source, available for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and also Android. And what it allows you to do is procedural animations. Now we're going to skip the reading bits until a little bit later. First, we're going to actually show you something in action, and that here is Spooky Ghost. Let's go ahead and show you kind of their showcase example. Open it up. You're going to actually notice their uh, scene files are just Lua scripts. We're going to see here there's a laundry scene here. And what this enables you to do is basically create procedural animations. We've got a number of of different uh, sprites that are coming from a single texture. You can see them all being put together here on this one background. And you've got like this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy, and they're all being controlled by animation controllers. So for example, this ghost right here uh, is this guy right here, and it's being controlled by a Wave X grid um, is controlling this one. So I'm gonna see it, play it individually, so you can go, or you can have it just, okay, so stop. And you can turn off the, the individual animations that you don't want to see, like so. So this one here, I want to play it. And you can see the individual animation applying to just that one guy. So that's what this guy is all about. You can use a number of different animation controllers, or even cooler, you can write your own using Lua, uh, and then have them kind of work on the world like so. So let's go ahead and take a look at a much simpler, more straightforward example. So we're going to go up here, and we're going to look at just, where is it, tree. This is kind of a cool example. Uh, by the way, you can see you can zoom in and out to take a look at it. And this is being controlled by a number of different sprites. So we have a single texture, the overall tree texture, which you can see here. Here are all the bits that go together to make your tree. Uh, those are assembled here on the canvas. And then as you can see here, it's broken up into a number of different sprites. So this one has grass two, shadows, trunk, uh, crown, stone, and so on. If you want to get rid of one, by the way, you can turn it off there or you can toggle the visibility there. Uh, so that all goes together to make this animation. Uh, and then when you like the animation, when you've got an end result you like, you can go down here to render, and you can export it out as individual frames or as a sprite sheet that you can then use in your sprite-based game engine of choice. Pretty much every 2D game engine out there will support sprite sheets in some manner. So let's take a look at how this guy is composed. So you see here, we're made up of five different animations. The first one is uh, the position X on the leaves. So the leaves are being moved. Um, and so with that one selected, I mean, why are you still? Oh, I stopped the one. All right, let's do this. We'll stop the entire tree of animations instead of just one. So first here you see we've got the uh, position X property for sprite leaves. So see over here, sprite leaves. Here are the details of sprite leaves, which by the way, you can scale them, rotate them and whatever here. So if you want to edit things, you can do so or in this uh, sprites properties. Or we can go over here to animation and this is where the magic's happening. So what you're seeing here is we're providing, we're doing a position X property uh, over time, so start to finish, zero to one, and then over that time, we are changing the values. So you can see the values of those leaves being changed over time. So what we're doing is basically moving them along the x-axis over time by this amount. And we'll see if I play just it. So you see here, it's pretty subtle, but what we're doing is over time, we're moving them around on the x-axis, and we're ping-ponging back and forth. We've also got this going on. So we've got a wave on the y-axis for the leaves as well. So we'll go ahead and see that effect. So you see we're going, applying a wave effect on those leaves there to create the, the whistling, or the rustling, sorry. And then we're doing the same thing for x, y on the various different other, atmos uh, other areas on it. So let's say we wanted to do something else. We want to say, apply something to the, the trunk here. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to select the trunk right there. So trunk is now selected. I'm going to add a new animation. So that is an animation of type script. Uh, I did that wrong, did not mean to do that. So if I want to do that, what I need to do is first select a script. Now script is actually kind of cool. What I said earlier on is you can actually have uh, Lua scripts, custom scripts to extend things yourself. So there's a number built in right here. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll do a wave along the Y axis script. All right, so we're gonna apply that script. So with that script loaded, now we go back to our sprite, trunk is loaded and we're gonna pick type of script, so you can see here also do a property, that's how you would animate a single direction or whatever. I'm gonna stick with script here and we're gonna add that in. So script for type uh, sprite trunk, 
is now in there. And you can see up here under animation, we've got control. So it's using the wavy Y script and we can pass in a value to that script over time. So as we scrub across time, we can change it out there. We can also say how to loop it. So this is going to affect our trunk alone. So let's go ahead and play that. So now you see we've got a wavy trunk. Now it only did a single loop there. So if you want to have a dancing trunk, you can do so. Let's put a loop mode in there and we'll do a rewind on that. Okay, so here we go. Now we have a dancing trunk added to our tree. So you can see how these things work together. Now, if you'd rather have done it instead of using a custom Lua script, actually, you know what? While we're on that subject, I'm gonna show you the Lua scripts. So you head on over here into your install directory, like so. Uh, you're gonna find there is a data folder. In the data folder, there is a scripts folder, and we have all kinds of simple Lua scripts here. So if you want to extend how the procedural animations work yourself, you want to start writing your own using the Lua programming language, you can do so. So here are a couple of examples. This is a simple, um, circle script. Here is the skew. This is over time. So basically it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you've got a setup callback and then you have a callback that basically is going to manipulate the value over time. So that's going to pass in a value and you can modify said value. So you're going to notice if I go back over here, value is being passed in over time as so we get to edit these out, change them. Uh, so that is the way your, your thing can kind of communicate with uh, your scripts. So you can set it up, pass everything in the value over the particular timeline, and then you can do whatever you want on the script side of things. And here is again for the waving over time uh, and circle. So if you want to create your own scripts, really simple, basically set up function for setting up your initial variables and then an update function, which is called every frame of the animation. And it's where you perform your logic on it. So if you want to extend this guy, you can quite easily do so. At the same time, if you can do it with just straightforward properties, so I could come back here uh, go uh, again animation we'll do a property animation here uh, go back to sprites make sure that trunk is selected uh, and then we're just going to go ahead and add a new property so none property for sprite trunk you can come up here to the animation for that guy and now you're going to notice you have a drop down for various different properties so if you wanted to you could change the red channel over time if for an example uh, and let's actually just see what that does immediately. So let's go ahead and play that individual. So there you see, we're doing a color scroll, only did one, so let's loop that and do a rewind. And now what you're going to see is basically now we have a pulsing red uh, channel going on there. So with this guy, you could do a number of different uh, procedural animations to compound sprites that you basically build yourself out of a bunch of rectangular areas of sprites, draw them on your canvas, apply properties, animations, uh, and you can even do grid-based um, uh, warping or, or effects on things. And then when you are done and your end result is good, you can save the results out either as uh, frames, uh, individual images for each frame of animation, or as a sprite sheet. Now do keep in mind, I am playing an individual frame right here. So let's go ahead and stop that. We'll pick the entire thing and let's play the entire animation. So there you can see uh, the end result that you would, you would get from what we did. So all we really did is took their default animation, added this red pulsing and our dancing tree roots in there. As I showed you, you can also extend these things out using Lua. So the sky is the limit in terms of what kind of animations you can provide. And the stuff out of the box, there's a decent number. So again, here, go back to uh, an individual one, such as the red channel one here. As you saw, there's a decent number of properties out of the box that you can work with. So if you just want to move things, scale things and so on, uh, or rotate things, you can do so right here. And anything that you don't find out of the box, again, you could do it via the scripting option. Uh, basically just create your own scripts, add them into the folder, or use one of the bundled scripts, and you are good to go. So it's a really cool procedural animation tool uh, that is now completely free and open source. So now let's go back to the reading portion of this. So again, if you want to grab it, it is available up on itch.io. All of the relevant uh, links are going to be in the document uh, in the uh, linked article down below. So if you want to go ahead and check it out, it is available under the MIT source license. There is a discord server. If you have any questions or comments, uh, you do need to have an OpenGL 3.3 card, which should be just about everything. Interestingly enough, there is an APK version of it available. So if you want to try it on your own uh, device, you can do so. There is even a web-based version of it that you can check out there. So that is a very interesting tool. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, it is now available open source up on GitHub. Uh, which again, I, I will have the relevant link down below. And this logo may look familiar if you're a regular to this channel, because on this channel, I cover all aspects of game development. And that is the logo 
for Nscene, a cross-platform open source 2D C++ game engine. Uh, so this is ultimately using Nscene. It's been in development since 2011. If you want to learn more about the Nscene game engine, well, I've got you covered, of course, because I have done a hands-on video with this one. As I mentioned earlier on, C++ open source MIT licensed 2D game engine. It supports Lua scripting, which is coincidentally what we are using here for extending things. Uh, it uses the IM GUI framework for um, it's a, an immediate mode UI layer, which I've also done a video on. Uh, it seems to have features of functionality, almost everything you would expect from a 2D game engine. So if you're looking for a C++ based 2D game engine, well, that is what this tool is being built upon. And I do have a video on that. I was having a very green day, apparently the day I did that one. So that is that, but today, the star of the show is Spooky Ghost, a procedural 2D animation tool that just about a week and a half ago was open sourced. And if you want to get that kind of information, sometimes it's on the Game From Scratch Discord before it is on Game From Scratch the channel. So do be sure to subscribe to the Discord server. Let me know what you think of Spooky Ghost, of uh, the end scene game engine. Do you see a use for this tool? It's kind of cool. You can run it in a browser or on a mobile phone. Um, and it's also really cool anytime you have a new 2D open source tool MIT licensed. Always awesome. So let me know what you think of this one. Comments down below and I will talk to you later. Goodbye.